What is the Moscow Aviation Institute? Moscow Aviation Institute is one of the largest technical universities in Russia. Students from more than 70 countries study within its walls, preparing to shape the future. MAI is a unique ecosystem located on almost 1,000 acres in Moscow. An ecosystem focused on the creation of technology and the raising of talents that can change the image of entire industries. MAI is a place where new knowledge is generated every day and technologies that will determine the face of tomorrow are developed. These are the laboratories and centers of excellence working on complex programs in the area of aeronautical engineering, UAV, composites, additive technologies, advanced engines, small spacecraft, controls, mathematical modeling, artificial intelligence, and many others. Programs are run in close cooperation with leading companies of high-tech industries. The key role in any project is played not only by scientists and specialists, but also by the students. At the university, joint teams of students and staff develop aircraft, satellites, new software products, and unconventional solutions to complex problems that modern science faces. MAI presents unique English language bachelor's and master's degree programs in the areas of aircraft, spacecraft, and propulsion engineering, as well as control systems and computer science and engineering. To provide the best learning and working experience, MAI has created a unique infrastructure, state-of-the-art laboratories with real aircraft equipment, flight simulators, a flight control center, a full-scale model of the orbital station ALMAS, engine models, supercomputers, modern software, and much more. MAI has its own unique approaches to training. Studying at MAI goes beyond lectures and classes. The educational experience of each student is personalized as they take part in real scientific and industrial projects, form their own startups, intern at MAI laboratories and centers of excellence. Students with leadership skills attend the MAI Management School, working on prospective projects alongside professionals from industry giants. MAI has an extensive network of international partners. Students participate in academic exchange programs at leading universities of Europe, Asia and Latin America. Together with its international counterparts, MAI hosts numerous double degree programs. MAI is an opportunity to build individualized learning paths. There is a wide range of special elective classes for students in English language programs, from digital production to UAV design. To determine options that are better suited for one's professional goals and aspirations, students are mentored by leading scientists and leaders of advanced engineering projects who are always ready to offer their help. MAI is not just about study but is also an ideal place for you to nurture your talent and truly shine. Students from across five continents compete and win as part of over 50 MAI sports clubs, from cheerleading to rugby. Project teams come up with unique solutions at the regular hackathons and competitions that MAI hosts. Dance competitions, stand-up shows, theatre, our own stage provides an opportunity for everyone to find a place for self-expression, create development, and just have a good time. MAI Campus has everything for comfortable living, self-study, and creativity. Cozy dormitories, recreation areas, co-working spaces, a whole network of various cafes, and so on. The campus is located almost in the center of Moscow, a modern metropolis where one can find literally everything for a dynamic and fulfilling life. Pubs and museums, nightclubs and art spaces, parks and restaurants with any cuisine one can imagine, high-scale festivals and global sports championships, concerts, performances, musicals, exhibitions, tournaments and sports you haven't even heard of, just you name it. Moscow is a comfortable and safe city, where life doesn't stop for a second. MAI is the start of a successful career. 
MAI values its partnerships with high-tech leaders. It is the key element of the university's philosophy. MAI is a major supplier of highly qualified professionals for the numerous sectors of the economy. Anyone can become part of the great MAI family by submitting their documents and passing the online entrance exams. Because MAI is the ticket to your future. Hi hey guys, and we're glad to see you on our series of online meetings devoted to our English medium programs of Moscow Aviation Institute. And today we're going to speak about one of our most popular programs, about the spacecraft engineering program that is realized at the School of Aerospace Engineering, the school number six. Uh, further, we will speak about the, um, uh, all the trends in this industry, about everything so we d I do encourage you to write all your questions into the chat section we'll try to highlight as many as possible of them and um, I think we will start with the most popular question that is currently asked uh, that is currently asked during summer about the question about admission and I'd like t my colleague Miss Natalia Vodina to tell you about the admission process this year uh, hello, dear guests. Welcome to our webinar. And now I want to tell you about the admission, how it will be this year. So the first thing that you need to do is uh, to choose the educational program uh, that you want to study at Moscow Aviation Institute. In our university, we propose many Russian medium programs. But to apply to this program, you need to study Russian language during one year. We have this program. You may apply uh, and then you will continue in Russian language. Or you may apply in uh, one of our four main English uh, medium programs. Uh, you saw our webinars about aircraft engineering program, propulsion engineering program. Today we will speak about the third program. It will be spacecraft engineering program. And then next week uh, we will have a webinar about control systems and computer science and engineering. All these four programs taught in English and the uh, tuition fee is 6,000 US dollars per year. You may apply for bachelor's degree or for master's degree. Uh, and how to do it? Um, you need to send us your educational documents. If you apply for bachelor's degree, you need to send your higher school certificate. If you don't have it right now, don't worry. Please send us your previous educational documents. And then when will you get it in July or August, you will send it uh, and we will um, complete your admission. And also you need to send your passport. Ah, and I forget to tell that for master's degree, you need to send us your bachelor's degree certificate with transcript. And don't forget your passport. We will check if you are eligible to apply to Moscow Aviation Institute. We will send you an application form that you need to fill in. After that, we will make a contract and send uh, a schedule of entrance exams. Students who wish to apply for bachelor's degree, they need to pass two entrance exams. The first exam is maths. And the second depends on the program. Students who apply for aircraft engineering, propulsion engineering, and space spacecraft engineering, they pass physics. And the students who wish to apply uh, to our third faculty and the, its program, Control Systems and Computer Science and Engineering, they need to pass IT. Uh, students who wish to apply for master's degree, they pass the entrance exam according to the chosen program. So, for example, you choose spacecraft engineering. It means that during the exam you will have uh, topics, uh, you will have two questions uh, from spacecraft engineering. Uh, so, we will send you a schedule, you will choose the dates, and uh, in, the, uh, in this day you need to connect, uh, you need to have uh, an internet, a computer, and a camera with a microphone. Uh, you will have three hours to write, the, to write your exam. And in three, five days, we will send you your results. If you successfully pass exams, uh, you may make a prepayment of uh, your education. And after that, we may enroll you. Uh, and also, you need to go to Russian consulate or embassy in your country to make notarized translation of your documents. We don't ask it to do it right now, but when will you be sure that uh, uh, you have applied to Moscow Aviation Institute, you will go to the embassy and make notarized translation of your documents. I think that it is not difficult to apply to our university.
university and the most uh, difficult step will be entrance exams uh, and we, we are ready to help you in this with this question you need to go to our site uh, en.mai.ru and here you may find not only exam uh, examples of entrance exams or topics for master's degree but also video review of all exams so please uh, prepare better and uh, you will successfully pass entrance exams and I think that uh, just in a month you will get a positive uh, response that uh, now you are MAI student. Thank you very much for this like comprehensive and full answer. Guys, I understand that it might be hard uh, for you for the first time to get all the details. So please don't hesitate to write um, into the chat section maybe some uh, points of uh, Natalia's answer should be cleared a little bit more. Uh, maybe you haven't heard some details about the fee structure or something like that, so don't hesitate. Please write them. Uh, we will see what was unclear and try to highlight. Uh, since the 2019, uh, all educational process has gone into an online format. Uh, how the next, and all of our, of our students uh, were studying online. Uh, so, Natalia, could you please say a few words about the um, educational process, how it will be organized, whether it will be held online or offline, so how it will be in the upcoming semester? Uh, yes, sure. We cannot tell uh, right now how it will be exactly because the situation changes uh, every week. Uh, and it will depend on the situation uh, with COVID-19 in Moscow during September or October. I need to mention that our English medium programs start in October 1st. Uh, so we will see how it will be in September and uh, I may tell you that uh, in my opinion we will have two forms. Uh, the first will be full online uh, because as you know in March 2020 Russia closed uh, its state borders with all countries and now uh, our country opened it gradually. We have a short list of countries of open countries. It means uh, that students from these countries may come to Russia, but there are many countries uh, which stay closed. Uh, so these students uh, maybe will stay in their home countries in October, uh, so they will start their education full online. Uh, and uh, if the epidemiological situation uh, will allow, uh, we will have a mixed form. It means that students who are in Moscow, they will study on campus, but if uh, uh, the COVID-19 uh, uh, cases will increase, we will move to, uh, on, uh, to online form for some weeks. And I want to tell you about the online education, online learning at Moscow Aviation Institute that we organized last year. Uh, we have pre-recorded all lectures. It means that uh, students from different time zones have a permanent access to, to the lectures. And uh, we proposed the comfortable schedule of seminars and practical classes. Uh, we use uh, the special technical software through which students can keep in touch with professors. They uh, have access, uh, I said, to, to the lectures. Uh, they are in contact with their uh, coordinators. Uh, so I advise you to not to waste a year uh, due to COVID-19 and due uh, to this difficult situation to all this restriction. Please apply and I hope that very soon we will shift back to on-campus education and all our students will come to Moscow. Thank you very much. Um, from my experience I can say that uh, the online education in Moscow Aviation Institute was held pretty successfully. So let's watch how it was this year and I welcome you to watch the video about the online education at Moscow Aviation Institute. Today, more than 1,500 international students from across the globe attend Moscow Aviation Institute. Freshmen from over 50 countries joined the MAI family in 2020. The worldwide COVID-19 pandemic and border closures did not stop the students from starting their classes at MAI as the educational programs successfully launched in an online format. Classes in more than 30 courses as per the curriculum are carried out using the LMS MAI and Microsoft Teams platforms. To account for the differences in time zones, a new timetable was designed to suit the needs of all students. 
Lectures and practical classes are recorded in advance, allowing the students to plan out their personal schedule and re-watch the recordings if needed. Over a thousand hours of study materials have been recorded for the two semesters. Two dozen faculty members took part in the preparation of courses, exhibiting professional prowess in an unconventional method of delivering the material. The LMS MAI and Microsoft Teams systems allow students to personally communicate with their professors regarding any arising issues. Final exams are held at the end of the semester and include both written and oral tests involving direct communication with the teacher. Online studies at MAI are a great opportunity for students from all over the world to receive a degree from a leading high-tech university in Russia while staying safe at home and confident in the high level of education they're getting. In 2021, the whole world celebrates 60 years since uh, the first uh, human flight into space. The date of April 12 of 1961 has forever entered into the history of mankind. The 108-minute flight uh, around the Earth changed the life not only of uh, famous Russian cosmonaut Yuri Gagarin, but also the lives of the Soviet Union and the whole world forever. And the human spacewalk is definitely one of the most important turns in the history of human society. This turn of development expanded the sphere of reason, the sphere of interaction between the nature and the society. And cosmonautics being the main product of the world uh, scientific and technological processes has itself uh, became a powerful uh, engine of the progress, continuously transferring to other areas of world economy and available and appreciated flow of new materials, technologies, uh, scientific developments, making a contribution to ensuring the sustainable development of mankind. And today, we have in the studio a professor of the Department of Space Systems and Rocket Science, uh, Doctor of Technical Sciences, uh, Alexey Vladimirovich Ninarokomov. Alexey Vladimirovich is a uh, specialist in the field of experimental testing of heat-loaded structures, and the results of his research are used in the design and testing of uh, objects of rocket and space technology, including the Energia launch vehicle, the Meteor and Mars 96 spacecraft, the Buran Air space vehicle, and in the creation of new composite materials and structures. And uh, Alexey Vladimirovich is actually an active teacher of Moscow Aviation Institute, and he has been sharing his experience with students for more than 20 years. Uh, so, Alexey Vladimirovich, could you please tell us about the global trends in the aerospace sector? I can find, uh, I can recognize uh, about three or four main tendencies of development of uh, space flight, space industry, and uh, I would talk about just uh, two main from my point of view of them. I think that uh, the, the number first is uh, the miniaturization of uh, satellites, uh, development uh, very fast development of uh, micro and nano satellites technologies and also very important the um, ex uh, pending of uh, the implementation of such uh, satellite uh, they uh, can be used not just as for uh, communication maybe maybe earth observation but uh, now there are a lot of very interesting projects connected with uh, uh, interplanetary flights of small satellites. And uh, I think for the student, for young people, uh, participation in uh, the program connected with the small and nano satellites techniques, uh, creating of uh, network of small satellite, it, it is very interesting and uh, very challenging. Uh, uh, approach in the education programs or something like that. And the second one is uh, increasing of interest in the last uh, 10 years to the um, interflight uh, for the far planet missions like Mercury, like uh, Jupiter. And now a lot of main space agencies in the world, uh, first of them who start this process was European space agencies in the 21st century. 
and also Russia, the states, and the India space agencies, uh, China, Korea, all of uh, main space industry countries, they continue to develop new projects connected with exploration of planets. And also, of course, the lunar, because uh, now we can see the real interest to the real colonization of Luna in not far future. And for students, I hope they will see the uh, practical results of this project uh, process. Thank you. Thank you very much. It was very interesting. But let's speak uh, a little. We have spoken about the global trends, but if we dig a little bit deeper into technologies, what technologies are the main vector for development of space programs? Uh, here, I think the also the main uh, technical problem now is miniaturization of some system especially uh, this is a system of um, uh, control of orbital flight first of the all uh, also the uh, thermal control now the big development uh, of uh, uh, loop uh, heat pipes, for example, for thermal control systems for small satellites, very interesting. And also, uh, there are a lot of problems connected with the um, uh, thermal control system for scientific uh, devices, for scientific facilities on the um, space, uh, spacecraft. For example, telescopes demands very uh, high precision of uh, thermal control, of uh, altitude and orbital uh, orientation, and etc. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, in 1968, Moscow Aviation Institute opened the school number six, the School of Aerospace. It is the largest uh, scientific and educational center that trains highly qualified aerospace engineers. And since 2016, the spacecraft engineering problem has been launched in English for both bachelor and master students. So, Alexey Vladimirovich, what technologies are um, current trends uh, and are being studied during this program at your school? Mm, I would like to say from the beginning that we have a big uh, historical uh, basement of the international students. Uh, for example, the most uh, famous, really famous, uh, a former student of our uh, school is um, uh, Dr. Wan Yuji. He is uh, now he is a leader of man flight program of China, and he is a top level guy in the all uh, international in space industry in the world. But now we start uh, program in English, and uh, the main. Uh, directions of this education is uh, first of all general design of satellites including uh, space uh, sorry earth observation satellites and also mica and nano satellites the second direction is uh, uh, space flight uh, techniques i mean the ballistic problem of interplanetary flights of uh, especially we have very interesting scientific result uh, which uh, includes the students research in the return from the luna to the earth and uh, some similar uh, project and the third direction is thermal control systems for the small satellites especially, and also for uh, big satellites connected with the uh, huge uh, scientific equipment. This is main three direction of our uh, program for uh, Master of Science and Bachelor's particularly. Thank you very much. Uh, it's utterly interesting to hear, but I think it is better to see with your own eyes what uh, the school number six has in its facility. So I welcome you on a tour around the School of Aerospace. Hello dear friends, 
and welcome to the building of the MAI Aerospace School, which trains designers, specialists and managers for the rocket and space industry. Graduates of Moscow Aviation Institute make up the backbone of specialized space enterprises. And in terms of the number of astronaut graduates, MAI is the leader among all civil universities in Russia. By the way, it was the students of MAI who designed and launched the first student artificial satellites. Today, nine MAI satellites have already been to space. Upstairs is our own mission control center, where we receive data from small spacecraft and conduct student lab works and research. Now we are at the center of cosmonautics named after academician Vasily Misha. This is not a museum, and these are not just show pieces. And this is a real spacecraft technology, some of which has been to space. Here students study the entire life cycle of a space-oriented product, from the first idea and first sketch to manufacturing and long-range flight. In their first year, students learn the course of Introduction to Rocket and Space Technology, which gives them the opportunity to see and touch each spacecraft and to understand the features of outer space. This is a laboratory dedicated to the Almaz space station. Using its example and other technologies, we study the structure of complex technical systems, as well as the specifics of human behavior and living in space, and learn how to design spacecraft, orbital stations and bases on other planets. From their first year, students are engaged in studying the main areas of in-space activities, such as designing construction of automatic spacecraft, satellite groupings, space communications, remote Earth sensing, navigation, basic space research, flight and launch vehicles. The Moscow Aviation Institute Aerospace School trains project design and system engineers for enterprises and organizations of the space industry. The university cooperates with the leading domestic and foreign developers and manufacturers of rocket and space technology. Dear friends, we have shown you only a small part of our school, the Aerospace School, is waiting for you to conquer the horizons of the future together. Space is waiting for students. Thank you for visiting all the facilities of the school number six with me jointly, actually. And uh, all of you have seen what our students can use during their studies and what do we have in our school. So we're trying to create as a uh, positive environment for work and studies as it is possible. And uh, we, will we have checked the chat section and there are lots of questions. Guys, thank you very much for this. We'll try to answer uh, for some of them. And the first, I think, uh, should be highlighted once again about the fee structure per year, how it is allocated. Uh, yes, sure. If we will speak about English medium programs, it will be six thousand U.S. dollars per year for bachelor's or for master's degree. Uh, for the Russian medium program, bachelor's degree um, is uh, four thousand four hundred U.S. dollars, and master's degree if is uh, five thousand five hundred U.S. dollars. And if we will speak about Russian medium programs, we uh, should mention um, our preparatory school where students study Russian language. Uh, tuition fee is uh, three thousand U.S. dollars per year, but uh, I think that uh, it will be easier to apply for English medium program and don't uh, lose a year for uh, Russian language. Uh, you will just start your bachelor's or master's degree this year and after four or two years you will uh, get a certificate. <laughs> Thank you. I think um, the second uh, valuable question for students is about accommodation. Uh, also, could you please comment on this? We propose an accommodation for our international students. Our students live in, uh, in a block 
of uh, two rooms. Uh, the first room is uh, for two, p uh, two students and the second room is for s three students. Uh, these five students have their own bathroom and they also have, have a kitchen on the floor. And I want to add that this year, during this summer right now, we have a renovation in our hostel. So uh, freshmen who will come to Moscow in, uh, in autumn, in October, you will uh, live in comfortable rooms. And uh, hostel fee is 90 US dollars per month. Oh, that's, I think, great news for students for the renovation about our housing. And also two more questions from the chat, uh, two interesting questions. The first one is, can I get citizenship, of Russian citizenship after completing my master's degree? Uh, unfortunately, no. Uh, you may only get your degree and stay here for um, PhD, for example, but to get a citizenship just with a master's degree certificate, it is not possible. This is a really long uh, process uh, with uh, many, many steps. Uh, yeah, and the uh, second question is, is a Russian degree valid in other countries? Is it recognized? Uh, yes, our, uh, our degree, our certificate is recognized all over the world and in addition, uh, students uh, may get a, a European supplement uh, and uh, it will be uh, used in uh, many European countries. Thank you. Thank you very much, guys. Thanks again for your questions. Moscow Aviation Institute has more than 20,000 students and almost 2,000 of them are international students, students from other countries. And um, students from which countries uh, choose more often the program uh, Rocket Systems and Cosmonautics? Uh, if we will speak about international students, I think that uh, these are students from China and India who are interested more in uh, spacecraft engineering program taught in English in our university. And I want to add that, uh, for example, Indian citizens, they, uh, they are interested in our space programs and our aerospace faculty uh, since their childhood. Uh, for example, three years ago, we, had, uh, we met in our university university students from an Indian uh, space camp, uh, space kids, and the students, uh, children, uh, saw the university, they saw all facilities, uh, they have uh, a tour at the university, so we hope that when they will grow up, they will apply for Moscow Aviation Institute after this experience. Yeah, I'd like to add that I, I actually was involved in this reception of these students, and actually I was surprised how, of their ages, because there were, I think, uh, guys, I think, five years old or six years old, some of them, and all of them were very engaged in space and very, very interested, and it was a great experience, I think, for both for us and for them, because we also learned um, many things for them, understood many things, so it was great. Um, also, today we are having our student from India who is studying at our English medium program and in the nearest future he's going to get his bachelor's, correct? It's uh, Bharat Simharedi. Hi. Hi. Uh, hello to everyone. Yeah, if you have um, uh, had uh, an um, opportunity to watch a video about Mai on our YouTube channel, you might have seen uh, a really nice um, video. It's called Russian Winter in MAI Survival Tips. It was uh, Borat who did this. And later we will also show you it once again. So, and why did you decide to study in Russia? Why did you apply to MAI? Oh, well, thank you for asking. Uh, well, I joined the Moscow Aviation Institute like uh, in 2017 for the bachelor's degree in spacecraft engineering. Uh, so after I completed my 12th, I was looking for various opportunities uh, in towards robotics and towards uh, spacecraft engineering. Both of them were like something I was passionate about. Uh, well, from I'm from India, so I was looking at the Indian universities to begin with, and uh, unfortunately. Uh, most of the universities were not so experienced like the other international universities in uh, the field of aerospace. Uh, they were just developing their curriculum and uh, there is a lot of more of experience to gain for them. So I started looking abroad and I was uh, fortunate enough to find Moscow Aviation Institute and I did my preliminary research 
and I found out it puts it's a great legacy uh, like uh, like all those cosmonauts who were uh, students of my uh, the technology the research the engagement with uh, the public it was all amazing and uh, I thought this could be a good place to begin with and uh, I applied to Moscow Aviation Institute. Thank you. Yeah. It's very interesting. And what can you tell our candidates about studying at MAI and maybe Russia in general? What are your like, brightest memories about it? Uh, from my experience, uh, if you look at the curriculum and the syllabus of uh, the courses offered by the Institute, they are really unique. Uh, if you can browse to any American university or maybe European university, it's really difficult to find such syllabus which is so specialized in a particular field. Uh, even now, right now, when I try to apply for masters, I look at the courses, I'm like, okay, this is something I already studied in my, like, where, where else can I study like such master's program or a bachelor's program? Like, it's really difficult to find one. Uh, we have like amazing professors who are really experienced. Uh, they have great work experience. They have teaching experience. Uh, they are always helpful and they always clear our doubts or any uh, queries we have. Uh, we get to see great uh, uh, legacy items which are in the university. We get to work with them. Uh, we also get some internship opportunities at good organizations. Uh, that is from the academic perspective and from the cultural perspective. You get to have a great international exposure. Uh, like I have made friends from all over the globe over here, uh, from every continent, from America, U Europe, from Africa. And we get to learn not only about the Russian cultures, but you get to learn about every individual international, uh, you know, how they live, their traditions and everything. Uh, so you're not only setting up yourself in Russian, uh, level, but you're setting up yourself in an international level. Oh, thank you. Mm. I think it's a great insight for our potential students and it's pretty interesting. As you might have seen from the video tour around Moscow Aviation Institute, it is uh, pretty rich in its infrastructure. And on campus we have uh, lecturing classes, uh, labs, hangars, and students um, can get more, uh, are available to get more than 200 uh, uh, pieces of uh, equipment for studies. Also we have sport and art, sex, uh, art clubs, so it's really rich in its infrastructure, but Let's speak a bit about the um, laboratory and testing facilities. So, Alexey Vladimirovich, could you please uh, tell us um, a couple of words about the laboratory and testing facility at the School of Aerospace? Uh, in the School of Aerospace, we have a few laboratories uh, connected with the uh, student education. And also we have a center of small satellites. It is a real uh, scientific uh, and manufacturing um, uh, department, which uh, the uh, main aim of uh, this department is uh, uh, creating a project and uh, manufacturing of small satellite uh, for different application. And also we have laboratory of uh, the uh, ballistics uh, to study the uh, space flight problems. We have laboratory of thermal control systems and also we have uh, some uh, connected with the department of small satellites, uh, laboratory of vibration uh, testing and uh, also thermal, um, thermal vacuum testing of small satellites. Thank you. Th thank you very much. Um, and uh, yeah, guys, I think you, you will have uh, plenty of practical experience. And uh, now I would like to get you acquainted with, uh, a bit later, I'd like to get you acquainted with the video that Parat made. But uh, a question, wh why did you decide uh, to make a video about Russian winter? <laughs> uh, well, this was in my second year of my bachelor's degree. Uh, so I was just looking out for some extracurricular activities, you know, like as a student, you cannot be dumb just with the books, but you got to explore the world and other activities. So I'm at the, uh, the media center of MAI, 
and uh, she was like, you know, you know what? Like, let's make a video about winter, and uh, it will be interesting for students and uh, viewers all across the globe, like how we experience it uh, from an international perspective. So I'm like, okay, why not? Let's do it, and uh, so that's the story. Oh, that's <laughs> great! So, guys, let's watch uh, the video that Farad made about the Russian winter. Hello guys, I'm Bharat from India. I am studying in Mai in Russia, MAI. And you know, before coming to Mai, people told me horrific stories about Russian winter. They told the temperature drops to dead, minus 30 degrees Celsius. And while walking on the streets, and you can stumble upon a bear. Ah! Of course, it's quite not like that. Let's find out the truth about Russian winter and how to survive it. The Russian winters are getting warmer and warmer. The global warming is taking a toll on Russia's winter. The official months of Russian winter are December, January and February. Although the sub-zero temperature holds from the months of November till March. As you can see, the Russian winter is not so terrific. It's survivable. survivable. The average temperature in Russia is minus 7 degrees Celsius. And be sure to catch the tips which you are going to be you now. <laughs> First and the most important thing is to have proper winter clothes, which consists of a winter coat, the most important thing. It is also known as a parka or a puff jacket. You use it every day and carry it almost everywhere. The next item is your winter hat, which you use it to cover your head and your ears. It prevents you from getting cough and cold. Other items include gloves. You use the glass to cover your hands and other from frostbites. But in a Russian sense, you can also use the fancy mittens. You see them? They are beautiful and very do well done with a beautiful embroidery. But you know, I don't wear them these days. And the next part is your winter boots. Well, it's not a beach in Russia. It's not a, some tropic island. It is winter. It is snowy. So you better wear winter boots to prevent frostbites. One important pro tip uh, is to have hot drinks. Hot drinks are always exhilarating. They make you enthusiastic. And drinking hot drinks in winter is a very important thing. You can consider drinking tea, apple cider, coffee, cappuccino, or whatever your interest is of. Drinking hot drinks helps you to keep yourself warm, keeps your illnesses out, and most of all, gives you some energy. Ah, someone has salt in my tea, you know. The next step is to have proper sleep in winter. Sleeping, you know, everyone does late night is gaming, late night parties, they're all amazing. But you know, you have to sleep in winter. It's a well known fact that everyone feels sleepy in winter. Even I love to sleep in winter. One should be wise to accommodate eight hours of sleep in winter. Sleeping promotes your well-being, it cures your illnesses, and also increases your concentration in class. But you know, you should never forget to keep your alarm. As winter sets in, the frost gets harsher. To tackle that, you'll need a winter cream rich in oil and glycerin. Along with that, you'll need a lip balm. The lip balm prevents your lips from drying and breaking apart. It's not a lipstick though, uh huh? And then the winter cream, which prevents your skin from drying and all the irritation that you may face in the winter. It also helps from drying, like it prevents drying completely. Ah, now I'm ready to face the winter. The most important thing about living in Russia to enjoy the winter, in all places on earth, it is in Russia. The winter is not so harsh, but you can enjoy it. You can enjoy all the goodies of the Russian winter. Those are like you can gently walk on the snow. You can catch all the snowflakes. You can do ice skating, skiing, and you can go down through a hill. Winter is fun, but you know, being in Russia and being in Mai makes it more interesting and warmer. See you at Mai.
Winter in Russia is snowy. Winter in Russia is fun. Russia winter is so beautiful. In Russia is exotic. Speaking about our creative students, we can keep thanking them for making such materials because it's always great to see an insights from students directly. It may uh, simplify very much, um, I don't know, further experience in Russia. And speaking about aerospace educational programs, it's impossible not to talk about cosmonauts. In the year since the first flight of Yuri Gagarin, about 500 people from more than 40 countries have visited space. And 23 graduates of Moscow Aviation Institute became uh, pilot cosmonauts. And our potential students often ask how to become a cosmonaut what, or astronaut. It depends uh, what program you need to be enrolled in. So, Alexey Vladimirovich, could you please uh, tell how does the selection of cosmonaut squads take place, and is it necessary to have an engineering education for this? For majority of space agencies across the world, the engineering education is a necessity condition to apply for the. Uh, space team of uh, this uh, space agency. For example, uh, in Russia, uh, the main problem for uh, the such uh, applicants is a uh, healthy control, healthy selection, because it's the main problem to be the cosmonauts. But, uh, for example, uh, in uh, Moscow Aviation Institute, uh, we prepare, we, how to say, our former student, all the Kazakhstan uh, cosmonauts are the former student of Moscow Aviation Institute. Also, some of our former students, they apply for the uh, French Space Agency to be the French cosmonauts. But uh, till now, they, uh, di they didn't fly. But anyway, such opportunity is possible for uh, healthy former students, especially important healthy key words. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. It's very interesting for, I think, not only for potential students, but also for current students, in case they watch uh, this live stream. Um, Harad, aren't you planning to become a cosmonaut the general plans for future, what are you going to do next after graduation? Oh, well, dreaming of becoming a cosmonaut is like really amazing, but uh, uh, as Professor Astor, like, uh, it is a long procedure and uh, the, it's not only about the education, but uh, the health status is also really important. And uh, well, if once some opportunity comes, does come, yeah, I will look forward to it. <laughs> and well. Thank you. Yeah. Um, also, Alexey Dmitrievich, maybe some highlights about the, w where do the graduates generally work? But uh, for our international students, uh, majority of them return to the, their own space agency, and we have a lot of our former students in the Korean Space Agency, in the Research Institute of China, in India, but uh, some of them continue education, uh, master after bachelor's program or PhD program in the UK and the US, uh, United States. But uh, also uh, there is some opportunity to continue to work in Russia, especially in universities, in private space industry companies, and uh, some of our former students, uh, they work in Russia also. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Natalia, maybe you as the representative of uh, the international department can al also give like last experience about the job opportunities of for our students, what are they provided with after graduation? Um, 
many of our students ask us about uh, the job opportunity during their studies. Uh, here I may tell that it is possible to study at uh, the university and also to, to work. Uh, but uh, don't forget about your studies because you are here uh, firstly for the education. But uh, some talented students, they find a job uh, in uh, our departments or laboratories and they have this experience and maybe after the graduation they will stay here at Moscow Aviation Institute. We have students, uh, uh, alumni who now are our professors and they teach uh, students. And uh, speaking about uh, the job opportunity after the graduation, I may tell that um, as Alexey Vladimirovich said, uh, that uh, the majority of our alumni, they uh, come back to their home countries and they find a job here. Uh, because uh, to find a job in Russia, it's a little difficult because you need to know Russian language. Uh, and also, um, our alumni uh, may go to another countries like uh, United Kingdom or uh, Europe and they find a job in different agency here. Thank you. Uh, also, let's uh, speak a, bit, a little bit about the questions from the chat. And another frequent or important question is how to get visa, how students can get visa. Uh, to get visa, firstly, you need to become our student. To become our student, you need to pass uh, entrance exams and to make a prepayment. And after that, we may enroll you. So you will be a student. And after that, we will uh, submit uh, documents uh, for the invitation letter. With this invitation letter, a student need to go to Russian embassy or consulate in his country. And uh, he will get visa. What documents you need for visa exactly, you need to contact and ask in the embassy because in different countries uh, the requirements are different. But now don't forget that uh, Russia closed its borders with all countries and we have a short list of open countries. So the university cannot make invitation letters for these closed countries. You need to wait when the Russian government will officially open state borders for this or that country. Thank you very much. Um, another, uh, also I'd like to answer uh, shortly one unfrequent question is about our recruiters. We encourage you to apply directly to Moscow Aviation Institute. You can do, is, do this, as Natalia said, using our email or write us in some messengers. So it's a pretty easy procedure. So we encourage you to do it directly. Also, another question is, uh, was from a student from Sri Lanka and also from one student from India, if I'm correct, is about the um, qualifications uh, they need to, students need to obtain to get into our bachelor's programs. Uh, so the, um, uh, there are two things. The first, that you need to have all uh, necessary documents, passport and educational documents, high school certificate, A-level, it depends uh, from countries. Uh, for example, for Sri Lanka, you need to have A-level. Uh, for Indian students, you need to have a higher or senior school certificate. And the final decision will be taken according to your results of entrance exams. So you need to have documents and to pass with a good result your entrance exams. Thank you very much. I think we have highlighted all the questions related to the admission. Also, uh, Harad, could you please give us just the last comment? Uh, students ask uh, about the vegan food facilities. I, I know that you are not a vegetarian, but <laughs> as an experienced student, yeah, I think you probably know uh, mm -hmm. uh, about it. Oh, well, I have like a few vegetarian friends and uh, I don't know their problems. Uh, so most of the Western friends, are, uh, they do bring their own ingredients from uh, India or Sri Lanka or whichever country they are from. And there's an adequate amount of uh, Western ingredients available in the Russian uh, supermarkets, which uh, they can purchase and uh, make their own food. Uh, there are also cafeterias where you can obtain some good and nutritious Western food. It might be a bit difficult at the start, but I'm sure uh, you will be adapted to it slowly. Thank you very much. It's a valuable information for students and also Moscow is a huge city. So generally we have everything as you have seen from the video in the beginning. 
Also, so thanks uh, to Natalia for her uh, answers. Also, thanks to my colleagues that provided with uh, such a huge amount of uh, informa interesting information, not only about the School of Aerospace uh, of Moscow Aviation Institute, but also about the industry. And um, in, by the uh, end of our event, we'd like to um, sh later show you the video about MAI and uh, with interviews of our students. And for now, we unfortunately have to say uh, goodbye for you. And I invite you for a webinar on June 24th devoted to control systems and computer science and engineering program of MAI. Also, we're expecting your applications on our, um, use, uh, on our email, and uh, also we're looking forward to seeing you in Russia. So, goodbye. Russia, a totally a different country and uh, being coming from India, it was a very different aspect, learning different cultures, coming into a very cool country from such like India is very much warmer. Apart from that, my decision to come into Moscow Aviation Institute, MAI, it's one of the best institutes and my decision to come here was far more decided years back when I was in India with my bachelor's. It's almost been four months that I'm in this university and it feels really great. I have learned the new language apart from my cultural language and this is a very cool language. Apart from that, meeting the people, learning something new. The architecture here in Moscow is so good. You get to see new things every day, a new weather, a new culture, and it's so good. I was expected to see that uh, how is the Russia is the cold. First, uh, I surprised with the cold because I never go with the minus or uh, five degree plus five degree, but it's minus. I feel in, I lived in minus thirty one degree. It's uh, really cold, but uh, the feeling is awesome. It's uh, Atlichna, yeah. And um, there are no polar bears walking down the streets. No, no, no there there are so many good dogs. thing in Russia I find that the peoples love India they love Raj Kapoor they love Mithun Chakravarti they love Indian movies whoever I met in the uh, in public they respect us because uh, they have the good mentality with the Indians that uh, they give a respect to Indians every time they uh, meet with the Indians they laugh and they talk about India Bollywood and they love Goa They are so helpful and most of the Russians they know English even if I get lost in some streets and I don't know they are so helpful they just take me to the place where I have to they won't give me the address they just take me to the address 
and that is so helpful for me. Even I can go out in the midnight and I'll be back to home very safe. In Russia is so safe. It's very safe for girls. Professors here are so friendly, they are so helpful. They contact us, they talk with us personally and come to know about the area of interest, what we need, what what we are longing for and they are helping us in those prospective areas. They are guiding us in a very different way and very easy way. It's very easy to approach the professors here and they are just amazing. That's what greetings in Russian means. So my name is Pravin. I'm from Chennai, India, and I completed my bachelor's in mechanical engineering. And now I'm here for my master's. So when I spoke with many people, you know how Indians are. You know our, how our cousins are. They they used to give it a lot of suggestions. They are they always need one question: Why Russia? Why not US? Why not Europe? I answered them only one thing: Russians are the first one to send us man-made object and man into a space. That's why I want to go to Russia. Before coming here, I think most boys would have done that. Would have done that. They are searching about Russian girls there. Yes, whatever the internet says, it's, it's true. The Russian girls are the most beautiful. Ones.